See, with a, a property of this size, I mean, you've got room to have lots of people stay with you. Why do you need to sit down? Uh, why do you need to be around people? It's interesting and rewarding to see people grow. Yes. And then to see them begin to turn their life right. How would you define this back? We may be ahead of our time, but it's revolutionary. It's doing church in a completely different way. Hungry young people eager to know God and to succeed in life. Why do you think so many young people come to SPAC Nation? What are you doing differently to every other church? Inspiration. Forget about the cars or the watches. Whatever oh, inspires. You can't forget about it. No, I, have, but I, I, I get it. I have but... to challenge you on that, but you can't forget about that. Because no, but... I've, I've walked in, I'm a grown man, and as I walk in and I see those cars, I'm like, wow, this really is impressive. This is something. This is somebody who's achieved something. Um, if, you're, if I was 15, it would blow my mind. It inspires. That's what selling drugs for. That's why they're killing themselves. I've got to be able to attract them in order to pass my message across to them. If you're successful in bringing young people into the church mm. and something happens to the church, let's say it collapses, yeah. what happens to those young people? We will make sure it doesn't collapse. Um, the, the church itself is people. If people don't collapse, the church can't collapse. I have to ask because, I mean, it would be remiss of me not to. Mm. This is a beautiful home and, and incredibly impressive property. And, there aren't many pastors that are living like this. You know, I've passed four cars on the driveway <laughs> and this is a gorgeous eight bedroom mansion. Um, how are you paying for all of this? So I learned about property and housing a long time ago. And so that helped me to raise investment to put into other people's businesses. Are you a millionaire? Not yet, but I'll get there. I used to be. And what happened? Church happened. <laughs> what does that church, mean? Church happened. Did you put your money into the church? No, I, I, I had to focus more on church and put whatever I get into the young people. One thing that you're very open about and speak about on a constant basis is the amount of businesses that you have, yeah. the amount of business that you're in. Yeah. What are those businesses? You're talking from the energy, we've got pharmacy, we've got food, we've got the crypto trading company, and then we've got very good um, property companies. And you but, had a few that shut down within their first year of trading, right? Maybe one or two. Such businesses might fail at the beginning. And honestly, the community or the society should be clapping for us because if out of 30, you have one or two that shuts down, we're trying, we're trying our best because these are inexperienced young men. It sounds like the church is one thing and the business is another. My greatest desire, apart from people knowing God and all that, is to have a community of young people that are very prosperous. A lot of the, the young men and women that are actually in your church, they all talk about you and say your name more than they say anything else. You know, you could argue no, that they, they say... say Jesus Christ or stuff like that. <laughs> that is something that makes a lot of people accuse you of being something that you say you're not which is a cult. Hmm. I'm a student of history. Any pioneer, any trailblazer would have a, a kind of respect or revere from his people. And it is natural. From Marcos Gavi to Malcolm X to um, Honorable Elijah Mohammed to all these guys, their names were mentioned many times. It's because they were pioneers, not because they are cult. Yes. Um, I, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for the tea. Thank talking you. Talking to me, genuinely. Thank you. Take care. You too. I'm not sure a man sitting in a house like this can really compare himself to civil rights leaders. I've never interviewed a man from the church who's anything like him. Look, it's undeniable that what the church is doing is changing lives, but the reality is this is a man who is living a very flashy lifestyle that just doesn't fit a religious leader. It's difficult to know who to believe him or his attractors.